Welcome back to another video. My name is Carl Gosling and today I'm going to be showing you how to tune your SRS PowerWind setup following on from last week's installation setup and, and brief review of it. Now the software is, is relatively simple. Let's just get the screen capture started up here. Yeah, there we go. It's relatively simple. There's not a whole lot you need to adjust. The guys at SRS have made it very plug and play, very easy to use, but I'll just take you through what there is here anyway, in case you want to have a little play and adjust things yourself. And also just so you understand exactly how it works and what it's all for. So if you look on the left hand side here where the mouse is, it says not connected because I haven't got it plugged in. I don't need to, to be able to show you how to use it. Mode is automatic. That is what you will leave it on for the most part for all your simulators, dirt rally, high racing, etc. You leave it on auto. It's going to automatically detect the game when it's running. It will show that at the bottom. Mine says Game Dirt Rally 2 because I've put it to manual game selection so you can see my actual Dirt Rally settings. Um, there will be a T appear in brackets down here when it's receiving telemetry from a running game so you'll know it's seeing the data stream uh, coming from the game. So you leave it on auto and the game will show at the bottom. The next thing in the list is drop down menu here, pardon me, is on fan because I have the PowerWind double the fan set up. Now, the other options are blower, which is these huge, great, I think they're C-Flow blowers from memory. I didn't check this before making the video, so apologies, uh, guys at SRS, if I'm wrong. I think they're C-Flow blowers, huge, great things. They'll blow huge amounts of air. And then, turbo is where you have both of these. So you have your normal fans and you have your blowers. Um, and it's kind of a staged effect, so the, the fans come on at low speed, the blowers come on at higher speeds. So, I mean, that would, that would really blow you away, <laughs> so to speak. But for me, I have it on fan because that's what I'm running. So, again, automatic, on fan, that's all good. Next one down, fan power percentage max. This is you, your overall limiting factor about what your fans will put out. You want it on 100%, unless for some reason for you, 100% is way too much, then here is where you would turn that up or down to limit just how much voltage goes to those fans and how fast they can blow. You can actually, if you look down just below my mouse now, where it says actual percentage, this shows you again, what's actually coming out of the fans at any one particular time. So whilst it's on auto, um, these two are linked because they work um, together as one. If you have this on um, always on, which is basically manual, you can then adjust the act, you can adjust the percentage manually using a keyboard shortcut, which if I remember correctly, yeah, control shift and down, control shift and up, and that will that will bring, if you look there now, oh, what have I done? <coughs> Apologies, I've just somehow closed the software. Let me bring that back up. Yeah, I must have just found the keyboard shortcut for close the SRS software. So let's bring that back up. Um, give us two seconds, yeah, there we go. So now that's back up. So yeah, I don't know what I pressed, but it wasn't control shifting up or down. So the idea of this is if you have it set to always on, you can manually control the speed of the fans. Um, it's not something you'd normally do in a racing game. Uh, I can't think of what application I would use this for where you just want a constant fan speed or one that you can move up and down. So you can use keyboard shortcuts or as it says here, button box. You, if you've got a button box, you can assign the up and down to, to buttons on your button box. So again, I can't think of a, a game that I play where I don't want to do it in itself, but if you have got an application that you guys can think of where you want to fix fan speed or one that you can just move up and down yourself, that is what the minus next to the picture of the keyboard and the plus next to the picture of the keyboard is for. And where it says actual percentage, that will change up and down to show you what the fan speed or what percentage of power is going to the fan at that moment in time. And that will be independent of your max power slider um, you know, you can have the max power set at 50, but then you could use your keyboard shortcut to bring it down, which, yeah, you see I'm doing it now. Um, oh, sorry, we're, we're back on auto, so put it back to always on. Um, yeah, so we can set this at 62, and then we can, we can then manually adjust um, the speed using the, the keyboard shortcut. 
to bring it up and down. Normally, if you have it on auto, which is what you would normally have it on for games, you leave that 100%, and then the game telemetry coming out for the speed of the vehicle will determine the speed of the fans. So, sorry if they came out a little messy. <clears throat> I, think, I think it made sense. So anyway, yeah, for normal use, um, auto, fan if you're using fans, blowers if you're using blowers, obviously turbo if you're lucky enough to have both. Fan, 100%, unless for some reason that's too much for you. Actual is just a physical display of, of what you're doing. Your keyboard shortcuts for plus or minus or button box configuration should you want to assign them to a button box and have them to always on. Obviously you can have them off, but then I don't know why you bought them. If you want to have them off, I suggest if you bought them and you're looking at this video, you're probably going to want them on or on auto. So uh, yeah, so that's down to there. Default max speed. This is a setting that is used so that when you first start a race, the fans have some reference point. Um, without this value, you could start the race and the fans could instantly be blowing at say 50% because at this point, the SRS software doesn't know how fast your vehicle can go and it adjusts this dynamically. So after you've done a lap or a stage in whatever game you're playing, it monitors the maximum speed your vehicle reached and it will set that as the 100% mark for the fans, assuming you've got fan power left at 100% and it will then scale backwards down to zero. Um, but this default max speed has to have a value to start with, otherwise there's no reference point and the fans could come on at, at some random speed when they shouldn't do. So it's set at 200 kilometers an hour, which is what, 120 miles per hour? Something like that, I think. Yeah, 120 miles per hour. So that's, that's just where it starts. You can move that up or down, but there's no real point to most. It works just fine where it is. And once you've done one stage or one lap, it adjusts dynamically anyway. Um, I suppose though, let, let's say you let's say you start off and you hit 20 miles an hour and they're blowing way too much, you could move the default max up to 300 kilometers an hour, in which case, as it scales back, the 20 mile per hour speed um, would have much lesser fan flow than it would if the max was set at 200. Again, I hope that makes sense. But for me, leaving it at 200 worked just fine. I didn't find they were too aggressive. Um, you know, for that very first stage of very first lap, it was just fine. Next one down, wing curving. I explained this in the previous video, but I'll do it again because it's a great little feature that I really like. When you're cornering, let's say you go in a left-hand corner, your left-hand fan will decrease its speed because technically the left-hand side of your vehicle is traveling uh, a shorter distance than the right hand side of the vehicle and as a result a slower speed dynamically because you are the tighter part of the corner. The further you are from, the, from the, the point of rotation so to speak, the faster you move. So the right hand side of a vehicle on a left hand corner is technically moving faster than the left hand side of the vehicle. This is why we have differentials. Um, if you had, a, if you had a, a locked diff like in a drift car, the outer wheel would scrub and skip as it comes around a sharp corner. So this is when we have open diffs, but that's a different story and I'm on a tangent. Anyway, left-hand corner, left-hand fan slows down, right-hand fan stays at the same speed. As you get back on the straight, left-hand fan comes up to match the right-hand fan, right-hand corner, right-hand fan slows down. As you then straighten up, right-hand fan comes back up to match the left-hand fan. And then in the straight line, they're both blowing exactly the same. Cool little effect. So not only do you get speed-based airflow, which makes you feel, not like you're moving, but feeling, it gives you an effect of speed, a physical feedback of speed, but now you have a physical form of feedback about direction change as well, which is brilliant, I really like this. Uh, next one down, curving effect. This is the strength of that effect, not as in how, how forcefully it blows, how aggressive the change of speed for the particular fan that slows down is. Having it on 10 means the fan will slow down as much as they have set the maximum limit in the software. Having it down to, to one means the fan will barely slow down at all and you won't really notice it. I prefer leaving it on 10 because it really gives you that differential between one fan and the other, a left corner, a right corner and being straight. So leave that on 10. Speed factor is a similar type of slider to the curving effect, but for the overall aggressive curve or ramp up of the fan speed 
based on your road speed. The higher this number, the faster the fans will accelerate based on your acceleration. The lower the number, the slower, it would, the more time it will take for the fans to build up their speed relative to your road speed. Again, for me, the default setting of three seems to be a perfectly good place uh, for it to be. Play with it again if you want. But yes, that is pretty much it for this uh, software and, and tuning guide. There's no drivers to show you how to install. If you've got this software already installed, when you plug your PowerWind kit in, it recognizes it straight away. It would show connected on the screen there. So there's no drivers to install. There's nothing else to show you. To install this software, you download it and you double click the EXE. Again, I don't need to show you that. If, if you're a sim racer, you know how to install software. And if you're buying hardware, you know how to install software as well. But yeah, just to recap then, going down with my mouse, SRS power wind slash blower, want it on auto. If you've got fans, fans. If you've got blowers, blower. If you've got both, turbo. You want it at 100% to let them do as much as they can. Actual percentage is just a, the number there represents what it's actually doing. If you have it on manual mode, always on, you can use your keyboard shortcuts to increase and decrease the speed or a button box. Um, max speed to give the software a reference point so the fans don't come on too aggressively from low speed when you first pull off until you've done your first stage or your first lap where the, the software here has learned your maximum speed pardon me, and scales the, the fan speed accordingly. Wing curving, your left and right fan slowing down relative to the sharpness of the corner. So this is a G-force based feedback. The sharper the corner, I didn't mention that, the sharper the corner, the slower, the, the more the fan will slow down. If it's just a gentle curve, the fan will only decrease a little bit. Uh, that's your wing curving. And then the um, curving effect strength, uh, how aggressive that change is going to be based on the telemetry from the game. Um, I like it all the way up at 10. I like to know when I'm cornering hard. It's a cool effect. Speed factor, how aggressive the fan speed ramps up um, based on your acceleration and road speed in the game. <clears throat> so I hope that's been helpful for everyone. Um, great piece of software and a great piece of hardware from SRS uh, here. Uh, with regards to me, I'm still a new channel, still a young channel. I'm trying to get as many videos out as often as I can. But, you know, Quality over quantity, I'm not just throwing out crap. I hope this helps people and gives you a good understanding of what you're using and what you're doing. For us as a sub, if you do like this sort of thing and if you appreciate what I'm doing, I'm looking to move a channel forward this year. So any donations that I receive through the donations link in the description, it's gonna go back into the channel. Uh, I'm not just gonna be spending it on kebabs and beer. Um, it's gonna be invested in you know, a decent camera, some proper lights, some tripods and all the other equipment uh, I need as a, a new YouTuber to try and get the channel moving forward. And a big thanks to, to those few of you that did donate from the last video as well. I really appreciate that. It is all being saved and will all be put towards the new hardware that I've got in my, in my list of things to buy uh, as well. So thanks very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Um, I'm really enjoying making these videos and I hope they are helpful to, to the sim racing community. Um, have a great day and of course, take it easy.